there's a world underneath your feet every day. And you only begin to see it when you put a macro lens on your camera. The world of macro is everywhere. Uh, it could be a city sidewalk, a crack between a city sidewalk. It could be off the side of your driveway. When I want to go out and look for some of this stuff and spend an afternoon just getting lost in macro work, it's as quick as walking into my backyard. Oh. To get started in macro photography, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a good camera. You're going to need a dedicated macro lens. You're also going to want a flash or some way of delivering a light because in order to get the depth of field that you're going to want for the best macro shots, you really need to light it up. Today I was using a, a ring light, which is probably the best choice for most macro photography of very tiny objects because it surrounds your subject with light and it gives you a much better opportunity to get in tight without losing the light off to the sides or above your subject. Finding your subject can be an interesting journey in itself and after you've started and practicing at macro photography you'll find that your eye just spots stuff. Yeehaw. I have no idea what these bugs are. I probably should know since they're on the tomato. Look in gardens. Gardens attract a myriad of bugs. Learn to spot where they hang out and you'll always have something to shoot at. One of the things that'll be a challenge for you at first is focusing because with macro, focus can be very, very hard to get. Uh, with high magnification, you're talking about a paper thin area sometimes that you are in focus on. Now you see me moving back and forth. Oh, that's beautiful. Back and forth a little bit. <clears throat> I'm trying to compensate for this slight breeze. It's such a tiny object and the focus is so tight that the slightest breeze will move him out of my focus and back in. So you kind of have to get the rhythm of the breeze and wait until that second that it comes back into focus and hit the shot right then. Depth of field is basically the distance uh, that is in focus, the portion of the photograph that is in focus. Depth of field can be used as an artistic tool by the shooter, by the photographer, to actually control what the person seeing that photograph looks at. For instance, when we got the shots of the jasmine flower, what we had behind that beautiful little flower is kind of a drab, beat up fence. And it's different shades of brown and everything. And I didn't want to include a lot of that in there. I used a combination of a very shallow depth of field I opened up the aperture to make it blur out behind the pedals and at the same time upped my shutter speed to a little bit faster to make it darker. So now there's just a dark blurred background behind it and what we have to focus on when we see it is the pedal. But then when I was taking pictures of the dragonfly, I wanted a little bit more of the, the subject in focus because he's probably a good two, two and a half inch long dragonfly. The challenge in getting a deeper depth of field is to be able to close down your aperture, go to a higher f-stop, in order to get more of him into that focus. You can also use light to control how defined your subject is. For instance, when we were shooting the cocoon, I used the shutter speed to adjust how much of the ambient light, instead of my flash, was coming in. So the slower shutter speed that I used the more of the ambient light behind the cocoon came into the picture. But as I sped up that shutter speed, more of the ambient light goes away and you see just the brightness from the flash that we were actually kicking onto the cocoon. Uh, one of the really cool things about our world that you can unleash with a macro lens is texture, patterns in nature. One of the interesting tricks that we used today was to backlight the leaf that we were shooting in order to see all of the detail and the vein and the intricate uh, patterns that are formed by nature and leaves and many other things. Sometimes by putting the light at an odd angle or behind the subject, we actually get to see more of it and document it with that macro lens. There's a lot of great editing tools out there uh, that you can go in and do all kinds of artistic things with your photo really easily. But there's also a big thrill when you can control the artistic aspect of it in camera. 
It's just a matter of learning those little nuances in the camera that you're using before you ever download the shot. I just want to remind you, be careful to not damage the environment you're in. There's going to be an up and coming macro photographer after you that wants to get a shot in the same place. You need to leave it intact for them. I hope to see you out there shooting.